All right. Hey, we're rolling. What's up, guys? This is episode 52 of the Man of Mastery podcast. I'm calling it Fear, COVID, and Courage. So in this one, you're going to get resources and actions, places and ways to learn and and act uh, with what's going on right now. So this is going to be a solo episode. Uh, You can see my my shirt that I'm rocking here. No off-season from the Tactical Games. You will probably see that one again in, in a week on the next podcast. And that will either be because... I'm wearing it again a week from now because I've worn it for a week straight or because we knocked out a couple recordings in one day. So listen, today's about, uh, again, fear, COVID, and and courage. This is a crucible that we are, you know, we're facing as a global community. It is, uh, as Queen Elizabeth, have you watched her speech a few weeks ago? She was talking about this is the first time that we've united as as a global community. We've united before in conflict. But this is probably unprecedented in, in uniting as a global community in a singular cause and a singular challenge. And, and there's, some, there's some real power and, and beauty to that. But part of what's really tough about this whole thing is, is uncertainty. And with uncertainty, we tend to get fear, uh, whether that's financial, whether it's health. And there are all these impacts like isolation that as things prolong, get very, very tough. But the, the fact is, Life throws crucibles at us. And I think there's an old saying that goes that, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be challenged with what you need and what you can handle at the time, whether you know it or not. The fact is, this won't be the last, right? It's a big one. It's weird. It's different. And the next one will probably be different as well. But this is, this is kind of what we do. We adapt. We survive. And humans thrive on adversity. The human spirit, uh, just there's something in that that it craves, uh, you know, we're going to talk about some books today and some resources that I like, but there's another one back here on the shelf from, from a, a friend and a coach of mine entitled Easy Makes Us Weak. And I, I'm completely convinced that's, that's the case. Too many of us have gotten soft in too many ways or one way or another, or maybe we're, you know, we feel like we're tough and developed and successful in some area, but out of balance and, uh, and, and maybe not the right uh, strength relative in, in all areas or different areas. So this is uh, going to be about how to prepare. And hopefully you were prepared for this one, but uh, whether you were or you weren't or you trained and you spent time getting comfortable with being uncomfortable and the mindset that it takes to, to really thrive in something like this, either way, there's going to be something here for you today. It's uh, really, this is all about sort of learning, learning to harness uh, fear. So face fear and use it rather than ignoring it or evading it or trying to escape it. It's about recognizing it, leaning into it, and, and in fact, even, even using it. So like I said, I want to go through some, some books, some notes, some things I've learned and tried from others um, in the past or I'm applying now or that I'm finding as I interact with some of these same, same people uh, through this time. So it's resources, it's actions, uh, places you might also go learn uh, further and find, find ways that you can put to use. It, it could be for health, it could be for community, it could be for routine, relationships, mindset, right? It's a theme of this show. So often this is just about what's, uh, you know, how to think about what's been going on, what's left from the world that we knew it before. And as things emerge, in the new normal, as we talk about it, what's next, right? And how we think about that. And, and then also, and possibly lastly today, I want to tell you about some training that I found that just started up today that is going on and might be really, really topical for, for, for this stuff and for you guys. So let's, let's dive right in. I had some notes here. Uh, the first I want to talk about is uh, a guy you've, you've seen on the show before, Patrick Sweeney, the fear guru. Fear is Fuel is his book that came out here just a little little bit ago. Uh, he talks about the root of fears and what he calls as the blueprint for bravery. So uh, just to pull one thought out of something that Patrick shared probably on our show, but that he has uh, he's talked about recently in some social media and he loves to cite because all of his stuff is, is really 
it's medical based, it's fact based. So he says, be curious that you research has shown you get twice as much processing power out of your brain if you replace judgment with curiosity. If you replace judgment with curiosity. So if you just think about that a little bit and the mindset of something unknown or surprising or scary, if rather than jumping to some conclusion, which is what the survival mechanism of our brain wants to do, rather than that, what if we just approach something with, with curiosity or as my buddy likes to say, playful curiosity, there's real, there's real power in that. And, and certainly from what research Patrick has tapped into, there's science behind that as well. So speaking of Patrick, he did a, uh, an Instagram live probably a month ago near the beginning of the pandemic declaration and, and wider spread lockdown. And uh, he did it with Mark Devine. So another guy that I'm going to cite and talk about here. But Patrick and Mark got on. And it, again, it was all sort of around action. So I want to share with you, they went back and forth and did sort of a five plus five, five each things we can do right now during the COVID lockdown. And I would maintain that most, if not all these things probably apply going, going forward as well. All right. So uh, I'll just go, they went back and forth if you have access to that Instagram live, but uh, I'll just go through Mark's five and I, I caught four of Patrick's that I can, I can share with you. So from Mark Devine on that IG live with Patrick, one, pause, breathe, think, act. So PBTA, it's an acronym that Mark uses in some of his training and his teaching uh, certainly predated this, but pause, take a moment, take a breath, think, and then act as opposed to just, um, maybe this is similar, you know, about snap judgment. So rather than that, think about how we're going to act and think about how we're going to think Two, catch up on quality sleep. So there's some data out or an article out about people working two, three hours a day longer than, uh, than pre COVID. I get that. Uh, I see it myself, but for the flexibility we've got in our schedules or, or maybe where those of you who have more time use it to catch up on some sleep. Maybe that's uh, getting seven or eight hours for a change as you should, instead of what life maybe drives normally or uh, catch up literally nap get nine or 10 hours. Uh, nothing better you could probably do for your immune system than that. Intensify your focus and alignment, right? So I think of that as, as another way to say, how do we sharpen and get rid of stuff that didn't serve us before? And how do we check our alignment again? And then just really, really get intense about the things that are important or that we want to do or that we need to do or that we need to carry out of this uh, pandemic as doing. Fourth, meditate 20 minutes daily. So that calming effect, if you've spent time like that in silence, in breathing, in concentration, in meditation, and that, uh, or maybe a mindfulness practice, the, the state that it puts your brain in, the brainwave patterns that you get into, the insight you can gain by just spending 20 minutes, right? How, how big of a deal is that? Now, maybe a technique is something you need some help with, but 20 minutes of quiet, silence, reflection, prayer for some people, whatever that might be. There's just amazing insight that can come out of that that uh, is so important, especially now. And then fifth, and hey, this goes along with this, this, uh, this solo cast, learn every day, right? So what else can you be learning that, uh, that can apply? Um, by the way, I guess I mentioned my shirt. I don't know if I said that it says no off season, right? Tactical games, no off season, right? So COVID lockdown or not, learn every day, train, apply. And then Patrick, he shared four that I caught. I missed his fifth one. So one, he talked about supplements. You know, I'm, I've, I've thrown these up on screen before, sitting on my desk. I've got my million vitamins that I take here as uh, everything from multivitamins, multivitamins to um, uh, vitamin A, vitamin D supplement. What else we got going on here? Vitamin C is supposed to be really good potentially with COVID. NAC, that was actually one that was on Patrick's list. Uh, charcoal, lycopene, I've got others that just apply in general for health, immunity, and wellness. But a few that, that Patrick 
mentioned in terms of not only supplements, but, but supplementing and bolstering the immune system is, um, I mentioned NEC, zinc, right? That's supposed to be one that shortens the, uh, like a cold virus cycle potentially. Proper diet. Um, hey, that's one thing. The environment seems to be healing in all this. And a lot of us are probably eating better quality home cooked meals more often out of all this. And another favorite of mine that Patrick mentioned is cold showers. Um, yeah, cold showers, man, do it, do it. So you can start warm and turn it cold at the end. Uh, you can build up from five seconds to 10 seconds to 30 seconds to five minutes to your whole shower, or you can do it the other way around, take a cold shower, leap right into the cold and then uh, warm it up at the end. But I think you'll find, and you can, you know, you can double down on, on different things you're doing at the same time practice your breathing or other types of concentration while you're in that cold practice your micro goals practice your 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 inner dialogue your positivity as you're making it through your your time allotment in the cold and then i think you also find as you try it and you get used to it uh, excuse me allergies or something um you're actually gonna like it you're gonna like it you come out energized and you start to really you know kind of miss the cold showers and maybe this is the easy makes this week thing uh, the, the warm showers start to seem unnecessary. All right, what else? Second, focus on facts, not fear. So that's another empowering tool Patrick talks about with fear. Fear is, is uh, you know, it's what, it's what helps us avoid the lion uh, jumping out of the bush as a caveman that kills us. You know, it's, it's making up all those scenarios, extrapolating data into all the bad things that could happen so we try to avoid it and stay alive that's our survival mechanism. But in terms of empowering ourselves, focus on facts, not fear. What do we really know? And then third, focus on control and let go of what we can't. Nothing we can do about it. Fourth, be present. And this probably isn't so far off from Mark's meditation and, and mindfulness. Be present. Um, we all have a lot going on. We probably got stuff we're worried about. We got distractions even in a time where maybe we don't have so many distractions, but be present. Maybe it's with your family, sit down for dinner, um, listening, right? Maybe mindfulness in conversations and authentic listening. Lots of ways to be present. So keep that in mind. All right. That's, that's it from the five by five with Patrick and Mark. Let me switch gears to another guy who shows up here several times on the bookshelf, Ryan holiday. So Ryan, maybe he's like the modern, Stoic, but he's, he is a student of the ancient Stoics, Marcus Aurelius and others. And uh, he's got some great stuff. If you've never read ego is the enemy or the obstacle is the way or stillness is the key. That trilogy is amazing. And then I, I keep this one around the daily Stoic each day. He's a page for each day of the year. And he breaks down uh, a, uh, a short, relatively short Stoic quote and then uh, explains his interpretation of it or how it might apply in our lives. He's also got, you can sign up for free, the Daily Stoic email newsletter. So you'll get some information there. And, and here's a couple that I pulled out recently from him and from the Daily Stoic uh, daily newsletter. So one, uh, it's entitled, and he talks about a crisis can make you better, but only if you have this mindset or, or the right mindset. So he talks about a few historical examples, one being Marcus Aurelius. And when he, when he ruled as emperor uh, back, what, 2000 years ago or so, they also got hit with a, uh, a plague, a pandemic that had a much higher mortality rate than I think what we've seen even in the worst COVID projections and lasted for something like 15 years of his rule. So imagine, you know, we're all trying to grapple with how soon does life go back to some kind of normal? And can we deal with a month? Can we deal with two months? Can we deal with six, 12, 18 months? Well, these guys dealt with, talking about uncertainty, 15 years or something like that. Look, you just gotta get past it and you gotta, you gotta live with it and figure out what to do about it. So in that article, there's a couple, couple folks he talked about and some examples and principles. So one was John D. Rockefeller and uh, a crisis that began uh, financial crisis that began back in 1857 or so. So a few notes from uh, John D. Rockefeller, who you know we know became quite a quite a wealthy mogul sort of guy. So 
uh, observe rather than attaching emotions and reacting, right? So you hear a lot of themes kind of repeat themselves here. Look for opportunities, be prepared for changes and, and shocks. Um, he was an investor, of course. So he, uh, the proverbial keep your powder dry, he, he used some of these opportunities financially to, to invest. So he talks about avoiding the herd mentality or ignore the mad crowd, quote unquote. Think for yourself, be a bit of a contrarian. And this, for Warren Buffett fans as an investor, this isn't too far off from, from his adage, right? That he's, he's uh, it's attributed to him or he's famous for, although I've heard it in other places, but it, it goes in the Warren Buffett sense, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. So uh, what Rockefeller lived through, he called the school of adversity and stress. So maybe that's, we're all going to school right now, real world education, real world MBA on adversity, on post-traumatic growth. He also said, choose to see the good in a situation and exercise patience. Those are, those are amazing. Um, what else? Take advantage of mistakes that less, less disciplined people make. So this could go back to mindset and, and can go back to our routine and discipline. Steady our nerves, embrace the present moment and focus on what we can control. Again, there's ancient wisdom that just repeats itself here. Another that uh, I picked up on from Ryan Holiday, um, this is another of his Daily Stoic articles, is the important thing is not to be afraid. And uh, to quote part of that article, he says, in scary times, it's easy to be scared. Events can escalate at any moment. There's uncertainty. You could lose your job, then your house and your car. Something could even happen to your kids, right? Talk about fear. Nothing worse than that kind of fear. Uh, he quotes Faulkner in that article, be scared. You can't help that, but don't be afraid. That's an interesting distinction between fear and being afraid. So the way he describes that is he says a scare is a temporary rush of a feeling. Being afraid is an ongoing process. Fear is a state of being. So don't let it control you. Don't let it be an ongoing process. Recognize it, learn from it, harness it, use it. So how do we do that? He talks about training, courage, discipline, commitment, calm. Uh, but mainly, uh, he talks about the Stoics again and, and what they held up as one of their most essential virtues. He also goes into a story in that article. It's pretty awesome. It's about a Canadian astronaut named Chris Hadfield. And uh, I mean, these are people that have to be so steady in, in very, very scary and uncertain, unplannable, unknowable kind of situations. So he talks about some quotes in a story from Chris Hadfield where he says, it's not like astronauts are braver than other people, Chris says. We're just meticulously prepared. And, and Ryan says, think about John Glenn, the first American to orbit Earth his heart rate never went above 100 beats a minute that entire mission. And that's all about preparation. So uh, Ryan Holiday, and talking about Chris Hadfield and, and that astronaut sort of training and mindset and experience, goes on to say that astronauts face all sorts of difficult high stakes uh, situations in space where the margin of error is tiny. In fact, on Chris's first spacewalk, his left eye went blind. And then his other eye teared up and went blind too. So in complete darkness, he had to find his way back if he wanted to survive. Put yourself in that situation for a minute, right? He would later say that in such key situations, or sorry, that the key in such situations is to remind yourself that there are six things I could do right now, all of which would help make things better. And it's worth remembering too, there's no problem so bad that you can't make it worse. Also, I think, I think that goes back to mindset as well. So positive focus, right? Positive focus on the things that you could do right now, which will all help to make things better and chunk it down into those micro goals. What, how do I break that down into those things? Who else says things like that? Um, FDR, that might've been in Ryan's article as well. The only thing we had to fear is fear itself. I have trouble ever listening to that quote and not thinking about the living color song if you're as old as I am. And um, yeah, one last thing from that article with Ryan is he says, look, we're not unique. We're not unique. We're never unique. This bad stuff happens. 
plagues have happened before. Um, crucibles, challenges, losing your job, death, um, fear, right? All, nothing's new. Let's, let's get out of the pity party. We're not any different. People have been through this many times before. And again, this is what we do. We survive as humans. We thrive. We figure it out. So what are some other ways we can figure it out? Another book here on the desk, right? Got a stack of them all the time. Chris Voss, Never Split the Difference. Excellent read for a number of reasons. Uh, Mr. Voss was the head hostage negotiator, I think internationally for the FBI for a period of time. So imagine fear, emotions coming into play in, in something and, and probably like a lot of non-rational type of, um, of, of decision-making potentially. So something I just read in, in Chris's book about fear. Chris says, the research shows that the best way to deal with negativity is to observe it without reaction and without judgment. Sounds like Patrick Sweeney again, doesn't it? Then consciously label each negative feeling and replace it with positive, compassionate, and solution-based thoughts. Doesn't sound too far off at Chris Hadfield either. So that, that sounds like an incredible exercise. You know, if you get to a point of fear, of doubt, of negativity, of just you wake up feeling that way one day, or maybe you build it proactively into a, a morning routine in, in other uh, sort of positive routines for the morning. Consciously label, and I'll say list, and label each negative feeling, and then replace it with something positive and compassionate, and I love action. So solution-based thoughts. That sounds massively powerful. All right, next. My friend, former go, uh, guest, former ghost, former guest on the show also, Brent Gleason, uh, the book Taking Point. So subtitle, A Navy SEAL's 10 Fail-Safe Principles for Leading Through Change. Well, that's what we're going through here, right? Inevitable change. We didn't choose it but the world has changed. We've changed. The situation has changed. So what do we do? Um, it's a great book. I highly recommend it. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a framework. It's a construct and it's very actionable. So it's not just theory. Every chapter has a way to go apply this in life and, and business. Brent's a business consultant. So let me just give you his list of steps. So these are the methods that Brent Gleason and team at Taking Point Leadership have used to help hundreds of companies, they say, around the world transform the way they think about change and how you can do the same. So his steps are culture, which is one of the most important enablers. So maybe you're leading a company through this and you're thinking about how our culture needs to look through the rest of COVID and beyond, or it could be family culture. It could be, again, going back to relationships. So culture, second trust fueling the change engine. So trust, big, big changes in life, uh, big goals and meeting them. Um, you, you, can't, you can't do it without support and you can't do that without trust. Accountability, ownership at all levels. What a great time uh, when so many things are out of our control to take accountability for where we do have control and acknowledge where we have screwed up or haven't come through or haven't showed up as we should have or wanted to own that and learn from it and fix it. Mindset, right? Belief in the mission, Brent mentions. Well, all these are about mindset, but belief in the mission. Yeah, let's, again, let's examine what's going on right now and what we want to reinforce or double down on. What, what is our mission? What is important? Each day and, and in the big picture. Preparation, that's what we're talking about here, right? Gathering intelligence and planning the mission. I think that's self-evident. Transmission, or what he says is communicating the vision. This is a challenging time in communication. Zoom, these, these video calls, great way to do it. But um, you know, how are we communicating with, with the family? How are we communicating with people we can't go see because we don't want to put maybe them in harm's way, older family members? Inclusion, the power of participation and engagement, uh, particularly if you're ramping up for a mission, a change, something new. Uh, and as someone else said to me today uh, about, about fear and about failure, that failure is fine, right? We learn from it. And, and a, a buddy and somebody I respect a lot from the business world 
talked about all the decisions he's made in life that, that, you know, others might've looked at and said, Man, you're crazy or why you're doing that or why are you doing that now? Or aren't you afraid you could fail? Yeah, sure. But whether you did or didn't fail, um, as, as I think we've probably all found if you reflect on it. And, and as he mentioned is that, that, uh, those failures are always lessons and you always end up in a good place somehow, right? You always end up sort of where you're meant to be eventually somehow. So inclusion, right? Why not include the team in the mission and, and those kind of big decisions, big changes? You have to. Fatigue. So managing fear and staying energized. That's kind of what this is about. How do we continue to be on the front foot in this and, and remain healthy and positive and harness it? Discipline, focus and follow through. And resiliency, the path for lasting change. Great stuff from, from Brent. So that's a, a bit of a glimpse there. Dive in, get it, check it out. But I think you can interpret each of those on your own. Uh, I'm moving fast here, but you're going to have to just take some notes and, and drink from the fire hose. Go back and replay it or pause it, make your notes. Think about how they apply for you. It's going to be a little different for everybody. But I will try to get some at least high level show notes in the, uh, in the website for this episode. All right, changing gears back to retired Navy commander, Mark Devine. So his latest book, Staring Down the Wolf, subtitled The Seven Leadership Commitments That Forge Elite Teams. We're all teaming now, or you know, there's no individual effort. There's no individual sport in life, in business, in family. So I, I did a preview of this book some time ago as a solo cast, but it was, it was a pre-release. This is the advanced readers copy. And I wasn't sure how much of the actual content I could share at the time. So what I want to do is share a little bit more or a reminder about that metaphor of the courage wolf and the fear wolf. And I'll just give you by title what those seven commitments are. And I love, I love that it's a commitment. It's not just principles, it's a commitment. So that's a, that is a doubling down. It is a discipline. So the wolf, what's the wolf? Again, got the, the wolf on the cover here, the wolf eyes. Well, um, yeah, Mark says he pulled that from a Native American tradition, a, a, a metaphor about the courage wolf and the courage dog, or uh, sorry, courage wolf and the fear wolf, or the courage dog and the fear dog. So it's these two, maybe it's the devil and the angel sitting on your shoulder. I don't know, but it's the two, um, you know, mythical contrasting animals and, um, they are sort of until we realign and think about fear as a way to harness, uh, our way to courage. Those are maybe, um, things that play against each other. And this is a way to think about those embody those and remind ourselves from time to time as we, react as we go to make decisions, which wolf am I feeding? Am I feeding the courage wolf? Am I feeding the fear wolf? Or maybe to say it in, in I think terms that Patrick Sweeney used, am I making a fear-based decision or am I make, making a courage-based decision? So I really like that reminder. I, I bring it up quite often. So what are those seven commitments? What do we need to commit to that is key for leadership and, and that forges elite teams or I'll say elite efforts or maybe elite results even through all of this. And again, beyond, right? Okay. Those seven commitments from commander divine and staring down the wolf commit to courage. Okay. Commit to trust. Talked about trust, commit to respect, growth, excellence, resilience and alignment. I love the last one, alignment, right? Because if we do all this, but we are not aimed at the right thing, then what's the point? All right, three more things. So I'm gonna talk about one way that we might think about and reflect on what life looked like four, five, six, eight weeks ago, what it looks like now, and what we want that to look like down the road. I'm going to talk about, uh, as I alluded to at the beginning, a, uh, a two-week training that is free. It's online. Uh, you can access remotely that started today that uh, is just so timely. 
And then last, I'll, I'll just run through a quick list of, of any other miscellaneous that I've seen or tried or am applying myself. So Chief C.J. Kirk, also an early guest on, on, this, on this podcast show, uh, incredible guy. And I will give you a link in the show notes to this one where you can go watch his video on the future me topic that he talks about. Or if you just want to jump right out to it, it's crawvology.com slash future dash me. So what, what is the future me? It's a concept of reflecting on, visualizing, thinking ahead to designing what you want yourself and your situation to look like in the future. And Mark Devine has that concept in his training as well. CJ even pulls back into more of a macro sense, but really good short video from him. I, it's a must, it's a must watch. And what the concept there that, that CJ talks about in future me is, is anticipating the end of the lockdown and what that might look like. And imagine looking back to reflect on what you should have done or would have done or would have wanted to do. What, you know, what did you want to increase? What would you want to decrease? What would you want to add or avoid? Uh, a couple of ways he talks about that is what's going in and out of your mouth. So food, right? Nutrition, hydration, what are all of those kind of things that we're doing right now? And then what's coming out of our mouth? We might go back to where we started with pause, breathe, think, and act from, from Mark Devine. So what, what is the quality and quantity, not only of what's coming out of our mouth, but what's the quality, quantity, and direction of, of our thoughts? Because that's think and then speak, hopefully. Quality, quantity, and direction of, of thoughts. And CJ poses a, a tough question. That's fair. Will you look back at yourself and see regret? Will you see an opportunity lost, someone who just got by during all of this? Or will you see someone who rose to the challenge, served, loved, and showed up for the people around him or her? It's a really powerful question. I'll put that out there as well. So reflect on that. Think about that. Challenge yourself on that. And go watch the Future Me video from Chief C.J. Kirk of Krav Maga Houston. Okay, human optimization, last week's guest on the show, uh, episode 51 with Jeff DePatsy. He talks about human optimization and his, he's got several processes for him. Well, right now, Jeff and his cadre, his team, Jeff and his wife, Jessica, and the whole team at what they call the Special Forces Experience are running the Robust Human Summit. Robust Human Summit, pretty cool. So uh, from their website, this is becoming a more robust human for yourself and your tribe. And it's more important now than ever before in our lifetimes. I believe that. Not at all an understatement, right? And they say resiliency is at an all-time low. And so motivated individuals like you are being called to step up and be better humans. I love the, the call to action. So this is a daily email, videos, that you'll be able to receive with training, with information from different folks, uh, Jeff him, and, and I believe Jessica included, as well as other uh, coaches, doctors, um, just some very experienced people that Jeff has on the team. So uh, as you can see on their website, join us for 14 days of robust human optimization. This is amazing and it's free. It's a free resource, nothing's free. It takes your time and it takes your commitment and it takes you putting it into use and action for yourself to make it something worthwhile, make it useful. So you can go right out to the special forces experience.com. Or again, I will put a link in the, in the show notes for this episode, but hit that right away. It's going, going now. By the time you get this episode, it will have been going for a few days. And I believe you can probably catch up. So go log in for free. Uh, not only will that get you the 14 days of uh, Jeff's, um, excuse me, training that's going on right now, but it's also going to get you on his list for information about other things coming up, like the trials and others in the, in the future. So do that. And then last, let's, let's tie up with uh, just a barrage of some other 
miscellaneous that, that I've been doing or that I've come across and I want to throw your way if you're not already. So the, the news, man, this one goes right in with what we can control. Um, you know, what is in our, uh, attention, intention, sphere of influence, all that kind of stuff, however you say it. Uh, there is nothing new in the news. It seems I, I think I tuned in at the beginning of this whole pandemic for the first time in three years. And I probably regret it because then you get hooked on it. You're clicking refresh. You're jumping out there every day and there's just nothing new. So, um, if you need a detox from anything, it's probably news. I, I bet if you catch it once a week at this point, it's more than enough. Connect, find ways to connect. I, I mean, just go make that your mission. Reach out to somebody. I've seen amazing, amazing examples of people just proactively reaching out. I've, I've had people reach out to me. Hey, here, here's, here's something that could support you and your family. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll just call out the generosity of, of CJ, Kirk, and, and Meredith, and other coaches at the Crop Houston School. They just reached out to me and said, hey, is there a way we can help you in sharing some of our online material for you and your son and your family to train in self-defense at home during all this? Um, amazingly generous. And, uh, you know, I've tried to go out and do a couple things here and there. So just connect, right? Look for ways that you can serve others. Maybe it could be nothing more than that phone call or that connection, uh, or it could be something greater. Zoom or other tools like it, these are amazing ways to do some of those things, make connections and reach out, take the time maybe to catch up with people that you haven't in, uh, in a while. I've seen uh, Spartan set up something really cool, Spartan Race. I don't know if this is still going, but at one point they just opened up a Zoom line and it was open 24 hours a day Anybody could pop in and out for any reason. It only had a few ground rules of, of behaving uh, yourself. But other than that, you jump on and, and talk to new people anywhere in the world that, that did the same and connect. Or people are having Zoom parties, you know, Zoom happy hour, connect with the, the family or the friends. Uh, along with sleep and, and health that we mentioned earlier, hydration. You know, a lot of this stuff is common sense on uh, on fighting colds, viruses, illness, boosting our immune system. So staying hydrated, flushing things out, keeping things moving, the lymphatic system. Um, get outside, sunshine, fresh air, movement, activity. I mean, all these are good no matter what. Um, online workouts, right? If you're if you're, I mean, this is a whole renaissance, and it's going to be tough probably for gyms after this pandemic, but so many people are doing body weight workouts, functional fitness workouts at home, setting up home gyms, buy a heavy bag at home, um, you know, buy kettlebells. If you don't already have them, some of that stuff's getting scarce. So, uh, you know, you got plenty of stuff you can move that's heavy. Pick up, uh, got the five gallon water bottles that get delivered. I mean, those are great. Those are about 40 pounds each. Um, you know, if you want to do box jumps, you can jump up onto a ledge in the yard. Uh, it's amazing how much you can do just with body weight that can get challenging as you stack and design workouts. So there's all kinds of online workouts where people are gathering together on, on Zoom or FaceTime or other video calls to work out virtually together. It's awesome. Um, as I mentioned food, right? Restaurants are certainly struggling now. They're probably going to struggle for a while. So, you know, support your, your local restaurant business in, in different ways. Got the crazy hair going. Um, you know, continue to patronize your favorite restaurants with takeout orders. Maybe when you go in, you want to throw them a healthy tip for those guys that are guys and gals that are working hard, keeping people fed, putting themselves potentially in harm's way and doing that. Uh, so take care of them. You know, maybe go buy, you know, how you can buy restaurant prepaid gift cards. So, Go buy some go buy some gift cards, right? Give give those guys an influx of cash that might help with anybody who's a brick and mortar business right now could probably use some extra cash uh, that's not able to serve their clients right now. So think about ways to do that. We have talked about nutrition. We talked about movement and how good that is for the mood, for your spirit, for your attitude. I see so many people out walking, moving around more than ever. So this is amazing for health and, and for movement. I mentioned sunshine and fresh air. It was used a century ago in the Spanish flu pandemic that lasted almost three years. Uh, 
fresh air and sunshine, free. And uh, it's, it's a disinfectant, uh, almost. Not to sound like the crazy news cycle that's going on around that right now, but it's, you know, getting outdoors, being healthy. Let's just leave it at that. Um, what else? Peloton. Uh, if you have a Peloton or something like that, you can get on and do these workouts, connect with a community there, do live workouts, challenge, jump on the monthly challenge, or, um, you know, connect with your friends on there and, and challenge yourself to distance or hours or, or things like that um, to, to kind of hold each other accountable. Family dinners. Uh, I, I know it's working well for us. It's really cool sitting around a, a dinner table and having a meal for the first time in a while and finding ways to bring conversation topics to that. Uh, my wife found a book that just, you know, it's got a, a we use a question of the day to uh, dive into something thought provoking or silly or whatever, but it's something fun to talk about and, and write down. We can look, look, we look back on it later and maybe, maybe that'll reflect some of our mindset and the way that things uh, we're kind of looking right now. Um, or, you know, several of those have, have like dug into topics that we don't normally come up uh, or come across as a family, things that maybe we've never shared or haven't shared with each other for a long time. I, I, it reflected for me on a story from when my son had just been born that I got a chance to share with him. Uh, journal, you know, put, put some stuff into writing. There's a real power to putting, uh, for me, I, I am a huge proponent of it's got to be pen to paper or pencil to paper. There's some magic in that brain nerve physical connection. Um, and, and another use for journal is if you're having trouble sleeping through any of this, so we talked about sleep. So a few things for quality sleep. Some people wake up because their mind is racing. You know, what's going on during this thing? What do I have to do tomorrow? What's, you know, what's a problem I'm trying to solve? What's something that I'm worried about? Well, if that stuff, if you have that and it keeps you up at night, keep a pen and paper or journal, something next to the bed. You can wake up, you can make note of that. And that should put your brain to ease. I don't have to spend all night remembering to remember it put it on paper, bang, you can hit it the next day and hopefully fall back to sleep. Uh, and before you go to sleep, you know, don't, uh, don't get crazy on the caffeine, especially in the afternoon. Cut that back, uh, cut back on the blue light screen time, which uh, blue light, you know, all this stuff, um, TVs, monitors, uh, cell phones, all this kind of stuff. It's, uh, it generates a light, um, uh, what is it, in Kelvin scale, the temperature, the frequency of the light uh, that blue light is similar to sunshine. So it activates us. It wants us to be awake. So lay off that stuff for two, three hours before bed. If you can get a book, right? What a great time to catch up on, on books and, uh, and some of this stuff. Um, as uh, a few more, um, you know, fear-based decisions, courage-based decisions mentioned it. Being mindful of language. I think Mark talked about it. CJ talked about it. Being mindful of language, communicating, writing, thinking in the positive. Get disciplined about that. Um, and communicating in our job, how can we, how can we listen in new ways? Um, maybe think about developing that as a, as a sense, as a skill. And I mean, this is something that can make you more valuable than ever in your job. If you can thrive in this kind of environment from a work remote perspective, think about how it's going to be when you. Uh, get back to the office and, and the way that you can serve and be valuable to people now that I think they will remember. And it's also a chance for innovation, right? What are, what are new ways we can be productive? Uh, what are new things we can do? What are new problems we can, we can solve? Excuse me. And um, simplify, keep it simple. What are, what are other ways we can, we can call from our schedule uh, that are just not necessary, not valuable, not benefiting us. What are you taking forward? What are you leaving behind? You know, do I need, do I need two, three vehicles? I mean, I, we probably use our, our cars, who knows what, 1% of the time, 5% of the time, 2% of the time. Do I need multiple vehicles? I don't know. Do I need to own a car when, when I use it for a, few minutes for a few hours out of X period of time. I don't know. I mean, these are, I don't know the answer, but these are kind of interesting things to challenge now and think about. Breathe. No more important time to breathe. And it turns out as Brent Casting says, we got to keep doing it. Apparently we got to keep breathing. And then um, 
yeah, I mean, I guess the last thing that I would just think about is uh, maybe it's a chance to reflect on and reinvent our image and our concept of safety. You know, what is, what is safety from a personal perspective? Uh, safety and security. What's safety and security in a job? Is there a perception that, that a salaried W-2, a salary job is, is secure, is safe? Well, is it? I don't know. Is it, has it proved out to be safe in whatever you might do during this time? Is it any more or less safe than controlling your own fate, own fate, excuse me, through, um, through creating work and a job of your own, being an entrepreneur, uh, maybe controlling your own destiny. So there's certainly power in succeeding as a team. You know, being an entrepreneur doesn't necessarily mean you do it by yourself. In fact, uh, all the best theories now say that, that, that you should have business partners, at least one other business partner. And that in itself is tough to, to choose and to qualify. But um, yeah, maybe reflect on what safety, what jobs, what work, what, what that looks like professionally for you going forward, not only personally. So that's a ton. I'm going to leave you with that for today. Uh, you know, I always ask for feedback, but this in particular, just kind of riffing on a bunch of topics uh, around a theme and taking from a variety of sources and hopefully something that's really topical in dealing with uncertainty, with fear of COVID and flipping that around to having courage around COVID and how we come out of it. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. I would love your feedback. Feel free to reach out. Love to hear how this lands for you, maybe how you apply it, what kind of results you get, what you're already doing. What did I miss on the list, right? So reach out, love to hear from you. Stay safe, stay well. Next week, I've got a great topic in the same t-shirt with a, um, a serial digital entrepreneur who, uh, I'll give you a quick, quick preview. It's, it's the first guest we've had on who, uh, that I know of, has been red flagged by Interpol for arrest and extradition and imprisonment. So this is uh, uh, Interpol red flag is something reserved for uh, drug barons, murderers, terrorists. So that's my guest next week. See you then. Stay well. Take care, guys.